a TV series, you can work with me on that. They gave him the rights to write a TV series, so he did a 10 part mini series version of Mall Rats, um, which he then, a couple of months ago, shopped around to the different studios and the streaming networks. As of this date, we have no green light from anyone yet. Boo. It's peaked interest. Yeah, I know, boo. It's true, peaked interest, but the thing about TV pitching, uh, things can be pitched in multiple seasons, and it's not to you get it in front of the right executive who gets it and goes, yes, totally, let's do 20 episodes, you know what I mean? So as of right now, it's on hold. Plus it gives Shannon enough time to recover. She's finished, she finished up her chemo a couple months ago, so now she's getting her trip back on the Anybody follows her on Twitter, Instagram, you'll see she posts photos of her doing her exercises, her hair is growing well, she's great in strength again. Um, so it, in a good way, it helps her recover some more and gives us more time. So you never know. Um, so that's where that holds. As far as Clerks 3, that will not happen because uh, Jeff Anderson, who plays Randall, has decided to not uh, continue playing those roles. <laughs> He was like, look, and I totally respect this, he was like, look, it's like a band, you know, it's like one of the members of the band dropping out, it's not the same band again. Uh, so instead he's- Not he's, Ben Hagar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so uh, instead we're going to um, take a lot of that and put it into a, uh, a Jay and Silent Bob reboot movie. Yeah! So, uh, or as you people would say, reboot, the reboot uh, movie, and uh, we start allegedly filming by August, September. Um, I know Kevin's coming here tomorrow for his photo shoot with Jay for Jane Bob photo shoot. Tonight he's in Buffalo doing his show, and so I'm sure if anybody going there to see that, we can ask him in person. So that's the status of what's going on in the news universe, as they would say. Thanks. Can you tell us anything about Jay and Silent Bob 2? Uh, I cannot, because okay. he hasn't been handing out scripts. I could have told you stuff about Clerks 3 if I didn't sign a $3 million non-disclosure. So if you have $4 million, I will tell you that. $3 million to pay the fine and the extra million because I'll never work again. Oh. <laughs> so that's, the, that's the story with that. Yes? Oh, Mr. Gary, what was it like working with Patrick Swayze? Patrick Swayze? He's like the winning of. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to have to ask my twin brother that one, sweetheart. Yeah. Oh. that you see in the very beginning of Clerks, about that clown comes in, goes behind the dressing screen, and 
It was Changes a wicked in, uh, movie. Fishnet stockings and a bustier, real bizarre. And so Kevin and him had a discussion. What do you think that guy's fucking life would be about? <laughs> <laughs> so Kevin said, I don't know, write a script. And so Brian wrote this script. It was really dark and really twisted, and Kevin produced it. And um, it's about a guy who's a party clown for kids who doesn't make enough money, so he decides to become a party clown for adults. And his first gig goes horribly wrong. <laughs> And you're seeing the consequences of that event. Now, I have them on sale at my, at my table, and it's the unrated version, because it was picked up, funny enough, at the Toronto Film Festival, where it was an audience like about this, about this much, maybe a little more. And there's a, a really difficult scene to watch uh, about 20, 25 minutes into the movie, where like a third of people was like, what the fuck are we watching? I yeah. it. It's like really weird, and they left, which was like a cool, like, yes, we make you believe. And then Brian's <laughs> game picked it up. We are promoting it, we go on Howard Stern, excuse me, in the States. And this is while Howard Stern was still on free radio. And um, he's like, guys, I gotta tell you something. Um, I, I, I enjoyed the movie, but I gotta say, I had to stop watching it halfway through. Not because it was a bad movie, just it was too disturbing for me to watch. And it was the best endorsement we ever got. Like, even Howard Stern couldn't finish it. <laughs> brought to you by Jim Smith. You know, it was that type of thing. So it's dark and twisted, like I said. It's like a 20 minute buddy comedy that makes a left turn into, what the fuck am I watching? Yeah, it's awesome. So it's got like J Muse in it. It's got pretty much all the cast you pretty much see on Comic Book Man is in the movie as well. Um, you got a very clean shaven Kevin um, and stuff. So yes, Brian Johnson, recently we have been talking at different cons and he is in the process of writing these sequels. It's a sequel to it. And it's, it's really twisted on a different level. <laughs> And uh, I can't wait to, to see it happen. So if you haven't seen the movie, if you want to buy the movie, I have like six copies left of my movie if you want to buy it. Um, it's good. But it's not a kid-friendly movie. Kind it's not like after, you know, life. Boxing Day or whatever, and you're having a family over for dinner, like, let's watch a movie. Hey, Grandpa, you want to see it? It's no, no. Yes. It's I mean, not. It on your yeah, and then, yeah, it's, that's true. It depends on your grandpa. I mean, although there is family love in the movie. If you've seen it, you'll get what you're talking about. Right. Yeah, so then, it's also not a first date movie because then there's a what the fuck? Like, you're a weirdo. Oh, it's a great that is a first date tester. True. True. But yes, thank you. We are working on it. And, uh, yeah, if you follow Brian Johnson, if he's okay with that. Exactly, they're like, oh, I'm just as twisted as you are. I but love you. That's fun. Yeah. Okay, get the chance. <laughs> You've been standing for a long time now. Yeah. Did you actually get to see Jaws pop out of the water? Hell yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I got, we got to do the scene, you know, at the end of the movie. They show us actually getting married there. Yeah, of course. But, yeah. like, was it actually yeah. there yes, and absolutely. Jaws popped out? Yes. And that's yeah, exciting. We had to do it for, you know, for like half a day. <laughs> yeah. And then, kill it. And, then, and then it was boom. Oh. Now it's gone. Oh. I know. It's all the good stuff that you guys have done. <laughs> if you didn't know it existed at one time, you're going to be like, <laughs> well, now, is now, a I mean, they could, they could I'm redo sorry. it. They could do this. No, don't but, say that. But no, 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 no I'm not saying Jaws again. redo it, but they could have a ride that's similar to that, but it would be Sharknado. Oh my god, yeah. Could you imagine Why that some big water park where fucking plastic that. sharks are spinning around, and you're like, oh my god, is that Tara Reid? What the fuck? <laughs> Reboot, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot starter you. 
<laughs> Good for you, sir. <laughs> but thanks for making me feel horrible about that. <laughs> Are you dating the girl in the hat? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> because they told Kevin, he tells the story better, but um, when he was doing the read-through, they do a read-through of the script and talk about it, whatever. Um, when they got to the part where it was mine, he, they were like, all right, this is sort of weird, but we figured your friend would be with you. Do you think Jason will do it? <laughs> um, Kevin was shocked, he's like, wait, this is for Jay? He's gonna freak, he's gonna shit himself. Um, but yeah, so they wrote, a, they wrote me into that, that episode um, just Later that I night. Oh, be with oh, oh, oh yeah, oh, oh. I had to suck all the producers off and all of stuff. <laughs> I didn't even have to, but I did it anyway. <laughs> so they were already gave me the part. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> they're, at the, they're at the table reading and they're reading the script and like, oh, oh, yeah. oh, Jesus. Oh, your friend has been here the entire yeah, time. the whole time, wait. So. <laughs> Yeah, by clerks and mall rats, Kevin didn't let any ad libbing go on. He was super strict with the script. Um, he didn't want any ad libbing, right? So, yeah, and even if you could, even if you were asked to change the the, uh, if you were like, well, what if I say this instead? He, uh, you know, he would usually be like, no. But you could say this, and then he would change it. <laughs> so, but yeah, it wasn't until really, it wasn't until Jay and Bob loosened up a little bit, and then Clerks too a little more, and then really it was Zach and Miri that sort of, because Seth Rogen came in, and was like, dude, I'm gonna be like, and then he started ad-libbing and going, and Kevin thought it was funny. Exactly right. Do you think, do you think what helped with the ad-libbing part was the, um, hey, uh, Kevin, I think you might wanna ad -lib. Yeah! Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, if only <laughs> Jeremy could have pushed it a little more yeah. in mall rats way back then. No, he yeah. didn't smoke back then. No, he didn't. And he hated everyone that did. <laughs> <laughs> One of the one of the yeah, and one of the yeah. funny things, the stories about Kevin uh, about ad libbing is on Dogma, uh, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon showed up after winning the Oscar for Goodwill Hunting, and I remember Kevin telling the story about about Ben going like, "Hey man, let's try it. Like, do you mind if I take a take?" And usually Kevin will give you one take of whatever you want to do if he you know allows it. And so, you know, Ben would be like, blah, 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 whatever line it was in Dogma. And he's like, okay, um, let's try it the way I wrote it, Golden Boy, and try not to suck. <laughs> <laughs> that man sucks. Too, so. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, there's no way I am. I'm not going over the border. Yeah, there's no way. I'm lucky, yeah. Do this shit quick. This 
Jeremy and I were like nervous wrecks when we came in the other night because we drove over and both of us had gotten in trouble like 15 years ago. My, my, my thing is from 99, I got arrested and they still bring it up and they hold me. They always let me over, but they literally use the, like, we're like, well, we're not sure if we're gonna let you in here. You have this thing. And I'm like, dude, it's 15 years ago. Like, oh, more than that. And then when we were crossing, we were chatting in line and he told me, he's like, dude, I hope they don't harass me because 20 years ago I got in trouble and I was like, oh shit. We're both not coming. We're, both, we're really nice about it. But again, I think we got lucky because it was late at night. There was a group of us and, and all that. But yeah, I wouldn't he try actually, to go. The guy recognized everybody, so he was like, pretty, yeah. pretty jazz. We were in the Yeah, luckily we had the first gentleman. What was his name? I don't know his name. The guy from Star Trek. Rene Albergen. Rene yeah, so Albergen. And the guy's like, you're in Star Trek. Whoa. <laughs> So that sort of opened his eyes, and then he was like, you're in wall rats to him. And so that sort of, yeah, we got a little lucky getting over here, but, but yeah, I wouldn't try to go back and forth. So no, I will not be. I don't know if Brian wants to try. He seems to be the, I, I'm the good boy. You. I don't think they're going to let me back in personally. So. <laughs> Did you get in trouble too? No, that was Scott Schott, though. There's a show in Cornwall, Canada called Cape. Uh, and, I, and it's a seven hour drive from New York City. So I picked up Scott Schiaffo, Chuli's gun guy from Clerks. You know, cancer merchant, that guy. And uh, we take the seven, I pick him up at his place in Jersey. We're driving up, it's great, seven hour trip, beautiful weather, blah, blah, blah. We get to the border and um, they're like, oh, okay, um, could you just uh, put over to the secondary inspection? I'm thinking, oh, it's just gonna be some sort of like, oh, we see such and such, whatever. And then they bring us into the office. The two of us sit down in this waiting room for almost an hour. And then they call me into this office that has its own window. And we go in, and the guy's like, oh, so what are you here for? And I'm like, oh. Funny enough, in the lobby was a local paper that showed Tom Khan in town. I was like, oh, that, that's me. Uh, we're here promoting some films here in Canada uh, that we shot a couple of years ago, and uh, meeting and greeting the fans. Oh, OK, well, all right, thank you. I walk out, I sit in the lobby, they call in Scott, close the door. Literally, like a movie, the shade comes down. <laughs> so I'm like, uh -oh. the fuck is going on with this? <laughs> He's in there for a good, nearly an hour, and uh, we come back out and we're waiting another hour, and he's like, oh, I'm sweat balls in there, they're asking me about my history. He had some, some drug addiction history. Same back, in, me. Back, back in the <laughs> 80s, this is the 80s. Right? No, I'm telling you, Sam, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mine's not as old as the 80s. And but he, yeah. he had a thing where he was high, he was on the road, and then he started to allude to the police on a car chase. <laughs> <and> <laughs> So there were three charges from this incident in the 80s, and the dispositions were all dismissed. He went to rehab at that time and did a bunch of stuff right to get right. And so in the 80s, it wasn't everything was computerized, it was like handwritten. So someone doing the file transfer data entry just went to one, two, and didn't enter the third disposition. What's the status of that charge? There was no disposition on it. And that was the eluding police disposition. If anybody goes to, if anybody goes to Scott Schiaffo's Facebook page, he does a whole video of the whole nightmare afterwards. So they, long story short, they didn't let him in. Yeah. So I drove him back in, over to the border, to the town that's just over the border, found out that there's a trailways bus that goes back to New York, and he can get back home from that. And then uh, the hotel room, it wasn't able until 5.30 the next morning. So I got him in the room, I got him to dinner. He was super duper upset, because he's never left the country ever in his life. And he's in his 50s. And so he had just gotten his passport, just specifically for this trip. He said, Canada's jazz to meet so many people's wanting to see me, blah, blah, blah. Wah, wah. No, we don't want you, because you're the police. It's all straightened out now. We have some connections in law enforcement that got to the record and actually corrected it for him and stuff like that. So he's good to come back again sometimes. So hopefully we will get him the Great White North at some point, because back in the day he was snorting the Great White North. <laughs> <laughs> now at least he'll be allowed back in. But yeah, it's that type of nervous thing. We would love to go see Kevin, but going back and forth at the border is just a bit of a hassle sometimes, even for Americans. So Kevin does his thing. He'll be here tomorrow. We'll catch up then. And, and it's not like we haven't seen that show a thousand times. I'm glad I didn't know that story. That's crazy. Oh, they didn't let him in. If you go to his Facebook page, he's yeah. got a video. You do, it's about this time last year, actually. And, or just click on his videos tab, and you'll see him talk about this whole thing. It's, it's pretty crazy. Uh, he was losing his mind. He was so upset. He came from Buffalo, and Kevin was talking. He kept talking about a comic book man about coming to Buffalo and getting all the uh, General Mills man. He kept going to Buffalo either selling Cheerios or Lucky Charms. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I've been to places that smell different. 
Now, yes, sir, just so you know, there was not a microphone in front of you. Yes. That's okay. Right. I was standing over there. You didn't see me. You lean down. You look at the kind of There you go. All right. What do you got? Um, Stan Lee's the king of cameos, right? But he says Mallrats was his favorite cameo. How does that make you guys feel? Awesome. I feel like that. Awesome. <laughs> I know Jay knew who he was. Who the hell is Mark? I was very excited. <laughs> well, Jay, you can tell him what Stan's doing for you. What is Stan doing for me? Oh, well. <laughs> I'm quick, no, I'm just kidding. Stan, uh, I just directed my first feature um, in, well, I did in October, and then we shot like three days in, uh, in January. But Stan came and did a cameo in my movie, so it was really sweet. Really, really, really sweet of him. Him up and he drove down, he drove and came and spent three hours with us. And yeah, but I swear I've known Stan since small rats. I'm not saying like I talk to him all the time, but I see him at least twice a year, three times a year um, for the past since small rats. And every time I talk to him and say, Hi, how you been? It's like I tear up a little bit hearing his voice because it tells you it's like. Reminds me of uh, Spider Man, his amazing friends, when he's like, Hello, Spider Friends. And I'm just like, Oh my god, you made Spider Man. <laughs> it just baffles me. It, like, really, to me, when you sit and think this man created so much. Like, everyone's here for one of the characters, probably, that he created, and it seems, it drives me. It's like, it's insane that some dude came up with these things that people love. Years in 20, 30, and, he, and, he, and he's a super yeah. duper cool yeah. dude. This yeah. past New Year's Eve, I hosted a celebrity roast of Stanley, and we were yeah. hearing him a new one in front of 1,500 people in Dallas. And uh, I was the host, and we had Brooker, and we had Ming Na Wen, and a whole bunch of people do as other roast um, uh, roast people on the roasters on the uh, the dais. And I, I, one of my jokes was, so Stan, you know, um, when you're having, you know, passionate love with your wife, <laughs> is this where the word excelsior came from? <laughs> when you come? And he was like, oh, so then Ming Na Wen got his wife on the phone later in the night, and she's like, and he gets on the phone, he's like, honey, the guys want to know when we're one of our violent sessions. Do I scream excelsior? It was a drop the mic moment for me. I was like, I got Stanley to talk about coming and screaming Excelsior. Well, I, I'm a DJ in a strip club, so I'm DJ gonna, in a strip club. I, I want to get him to talk about the Deadpool cameo oh, next time I see him. Brother, yeah. That is true. You did play a DJ in a strip club. Yep. So you have a cold. Yeah. And then for You're start drawing some fucking comics soon. Oh, <laughs> I'm working on it. I gave Jay a print of my artwork. How often? Which one is yours? Uh, the one with him and Kevin, and it's got the big weed leaf on it. Oh, I just saw that. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. And then for Jason, what's your favorite superhero show? Superhero, like TV show, right? Yeah, because uh, I listen to Kevin's podcast. I know you love them all. No, I do. I don't. Um, I hate to say my favorites. I don't know. Do you like asking Brody about like? Yeah, I don't know. I would. Say, I want to say that. I don't know. I like. I like them all too much. I would say maybe the Flash. I lean a little more towards. Just because you were on it. So many cool characters on there, you know, like they keep throwing on. Characters. Honestly, thought you were going to go with Arrow because of Deadshot. Well, I mean, that's awesome too, but he wasn't on enough. Save yeah. The, they didn't leave on enough. Save the show you want to get on. Oh, He's videotaping yeah. it. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'll put it on YouTube. I mean, Supergirl. <laughs> Arrow. Legends of Tomorrow, Marvel's Shield Agents. Such. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll just cut it. We'll just cut it and we'll send it and to now, each of us. Uh, it's Black Lightning. It's coming out, right? It's a Black Lightning. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's all of them. It's coming out. Run on, run on. You guys can come in there in the door. It's going to get real good. We're going to start pulling our balls out. Yeah! Woo! All right, Kanye. Are you guys waiting for the next? The next thing, or are you guys trying to come in for this? They're clearly waiting for the Come ball. in, come in. Come what's in. next? The what's ball. next? What's next? The balls. Robert England? Balls. Oh, all right. Elm balls. Come on in, come on in, guys. Yeah. Move, move, move this way. Yeah, go ahead. Hello, guys. Hello. Hello. I know I met all three of you today. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I'm a 
um, really appreciate all the time that you spend with me chatting. I forgot to ask Jason. Um, 12 inches. Sit <laughs> <laughs> down. <laughs> oh! I meant to say that. I think it's actually 150 meters from the school. <laughs> Yes. 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 Absolutely adore that show. I adore that you were on it. Are you having anything to do with the animation? Yeah, I'm in the animation. Jimmy's in it. So um, it's, it's all. It, I'm. I've been waiting myself. They were supposed to be on October. Then they said it's a little behind, and now it's supposed to be. I just talked. I didn't even know, but I spoke to the guys here, and they're saying definitely by this summer, if not sooner. Um, but it's super, super awesome. Like when I read the script, I was literally laughing out loud. Um, and it, it starts right where the season two ended, with the like the you know the camera follows through to the clone. It starts there, and, and it's super funny. Um, and my character's in it, and I'm in it a bunch actually, because I, I mean, I don't know, I guess, I don't know if I want to spoil it. Um, spoil yeah, it! Should I? Spoil it! So I wind up, Atticus becomes the principal, and I become the guidance counselor. Jimmy does. So it's what? super funny, super goofy. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. If someone hears that from the, the writers of the movie that's part of it, they might get pissed that I gave that away. But honestly, it's, the script's really funny, so I can't wait to see it myself. And because it's animation, too, they're able to get away with, like, um, what's his name's arm, you know, his hand, like, yeah. it fucking shoots and does crazy shit, and it's, it's going to be really funny. So yeah, hopefully by December. Yeah, I'm hoping that this happens, and their goal is, if it does well, they want to make keep making some maybe animated movies, so we'll see. That's so impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Why do you keep standing up? Do you have a question? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, she has to pee because she drank like uh, seven beers. Oh, sorry. Yeah. They're, they're passing you up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure, actually. I think they they asked us, I believe. Um, I, I honestly, again, I'm, uh, I sort of used to just be a lot of the ride back then. Kevin was like, hey, we're going to do this cameo in this movie. And I was like, cool. Um, but seriously, for years, it was like, Kevin just like, I wrote you in this movie. I wrote you in this movie. Um, and then I started using drugs a lot, and then I'd get sober, and he'd be like, we're going to do this movie. So really, I, I'm not sure how it came about. I believe they just said, well, like, hey, we want to throw you in the... They, the Weinsteins, I think, uh, yeah, the, the Dimension. Dimension had yeah. something to do with the movie and they wanted to just throw us in because Kevin's relationship with the Dimension and all that. Yeah. Oh, it was awesome. I, I had fun. I, you know, I got to be on it. I was only there like three days, I think, because I get killed so quick. Um, but uh, but it was cool. It was cool to be part of that. The, you know, there was the Project Greenlight, so it was cool to be part of that new, you know, the process they were going through, shooting everything and the making of and the contest. The guy, John, who won the script contest. And, um, yeah, Henry Rollins, it was all, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Again, it was the first time I had a prosthetic put on, and, and uh, that was interesting, you know. Well, to that's not true. Right. I don't use a prosthetic in the Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was fun. It was cool. I really had yeah, fun. It was quick, but fun. Okay, so speaking of animation, it was so long ago. What was it like doing the voice work for the Clerks cartoon? Uh, as Brian, I feel like would remember more. I was pretty. We easy we back then. yeah we uh, we literally signed Jason out of rehab the start of that project. Yeah. Um, Congratulations <laughs> for getting out. He was. Thanks, yeah. Although you were you were mixed up with that chick Amy or whatever her name was. She was bad news. Yeah, it was it was a mess. I was pretty messed up. So yeah. So there's a lot of if, if you listen if you listen to the episodes, there's a lot of episodes with his voice where his voice is like. <laughs> That's because he was he was in recovery, like straight out of recovery. Uh, it was great working with some amazing writers. I mean, we had Dan Mandel, who was part of SNL, part of Seinfeld. 
He was part, he's now the showrunner on Veep, incredible, hilarious writers. Um, and then the animators were great. And then we got amazing cameos and stuff. And, and it was, it's sad the fact that ABC didn't know what they had on their hands when they were producing us. It was um, so good. So six episodes are never enough. It's literally like 15 seconds of sex. I'm like, what? That's it? <laughs> That's it. Sorry, my life, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, you know what I'm talking about, right? Right, yeah. Anyway, now. Uh, so uh, we've always hoped about doing eventually that again. I know Jay was great. Him and his wife, Jordan, um, produced another animated series called Jay and Silent Bob Super Groovy Cartoon Movie, which is a, a feature like animated with the Jay and Silent Bob characters. And uh, it was that was awesome. another, and that was done by Stark. Yeah, Steve name? Stark. Steve Stark animated it. Steve Stark animated it. It's a, it's a different style of animation because the exact type of animation that was the cartoon series is owned by Disney, so we can't do that. And the guy who did that, uh, Bill Campbell, I think his name was Chris Campbell, he had done like Powerpuff Girls and stuff like that. It was a really great style. So I always tell fans like maybe one day we can go back to it when we are physically absolutely hideous to look at in real life. <laughs> But at least we still have our voices, so we'd be like, Randall, what the hell are you doing? You know, that type of thing. So, um, thank you, and it's, it's something that we thought we were going to live on forever with, but, you know. Fucking that was like two years away, you say. Yeah, two years away. Exactly. I think it was before its time. It was, it was way before its time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two part question. Um, the, That was locations, yeah. apartment, uh, it was Eden Prairie Mall in Minnesota. Minnesota. So the Minnesota government gave like a tax credit and stuff like that. It was a brand new fucking mall though. Like yeah. no one was in it. The storefronts were still empty. I think there was like three anchor stores. It was like a Target, a Kohl's, and a Sears. When Jay got there, he went to Target and got a huge giant fucking boombox in the room and a TV game room thing. <laughs> at, the end, at the end of filming, you turned it in like, oh, this sucks, and I need my money back. And they're like, here you go, sir. <laughs> like, his room would look like a fucking giant gaming fucking palace, and then you return all that shit and give it to I wouldn't tell him, though. Oh, at the store, I'd be like, hey, man, I'm, I'm only here for a little while shooting, working on something, so I'm going to return this. And they're like, as long as it's in the box and it's okay, it's fine. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so his room was like a fucking nightmare every time. And he was like, come on in. So, yeah, it's Minnetonka Mall. Someone told me that they're closing it down. Yeah. In Eaton Prairie, yeah. in Minnesota, yeah. Minnetonka, Minnesota, yeah. Eaton Prairie Mall. And then um, the Dirt Mall is now a movie theater in Jersey. They don't have that anymore, huh? No, really, oh, it's it's not not But it's like a 16 screen movie theater now. It's like 40 inch. Yeah. Uh, speaking of movie theater, yeah. Did you guys know ahead of time you're going to be shooting the uh, psychic? Oh, well, we read the script. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it says, girl talk less. <laughs> Are you asking if we jerk no, no, our dicks first? <laughs> What he wants to know really is, did we jerk off before we got the I was going to say, it, it is weird because she, or after. Yeah, she does the convention circuit from time to time as well. And when we see her, I say hello, of course, and stuff. But to this day, I still go, three nipples. You know, in my head. It's like, <laughs> it was a weird day. But God love her, man. She has a great <laughs> fucking rack. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. She told me that. It was still so weird. It was a weird day. <laughs> hey. I'm leaving. You got it? Yeah, I had to use the bathroom. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, come on, I wanted to pop in. But thank you for coming here. For, I know not just for me, for them. Pop in late. Thanks for coming. Early. I'm going to go back to my pee, go to the table. Girls, you know, know, oh, do I get the clap? I'm walking out to Jason News, everybody. Right. Just so you know, in con terms, you guys are just fucking land, bam, thank you, fucking man. <laughs> You're like, but we didn't finish. It I didn't get clicking. to con yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm done. Shut up. We need to get the balls. <laughs> Somebody put this in the mind stand for us if you could. Come on, who's going to assist? Hey, I kind of wanted to jump back to Kurt Damon. Thank you, sir. Um, the second episode is flashback episode. It's absolutely ridiculous. 
Correct. Correct. Which no, ABC aired first, stupidly enough, <laughs> which killed the flashback episode Joe. Yeah. It was just uh, Dave Mandel, who was the head writer and uh, co-head writer with Kevin and showrunner, thought it was hilarious. That wouldn't be funny that our clip show, because you ever see uh, an episode of a sitcom where they're like three seasons and they do a clip show and they do, remember when we did such and such? Wouldn't it be funny if we just did it in the second show, where all the references were from the first show? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why are we doing this? So it's that type of thing that... That was the type of Game of Thrones. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Chocolate covered pretzels. I just gotta say, when Michael Rooker, who's oh, in the Philly Wizard World right now, he gets so angry. Yeah, he, he, he doesn't get enough choking a couple of times. Yeah, yeah he, but, but I mean, not only that though, but I mean, he he literally behind this table, them. he gets bags and bags and bags. But he hates them. Yeah, he does. He, he just knows he's gonna get them. He is. He's gonna get them. And then personally, I think he needs to team up with the local homeless shelter. And like, by the way, I'm donating five tons of. <laughs> They're not stink pond at all. <laughs> the assassination scene. Yeah. Why did? Why couldn't that have been reduced a little bit? Yeah, they shot the beginning of the movie entirely. Yeah. Uh, that what the original beginning of Mallrats was nothing like the what you see now. I mean, it's on the extended version. But if you watch the extended version, you actually understand why that cut out. It really doesn't, yeah, it's like it doesn't work. Like it's not funny. Yeah. 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 It, there's a reason stuff winds up in the editing before something we curse it for a little while, but then you see it in context and you go, oh shit, that's what. This is Batman versus Superman. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it was just, I remember it was so cold when we shot that scene that uh, uh, Tara and I both were just we were miserable. I mean, some of the makeup women were uh, so cold that they're, 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 they were crying, their tears were freezing to their face. Oh. And we shot that on top of a building, you know, like 30 degrees below zero, like 33-story building or something like that. And uh, it was cold. It was miserable. So the scene didn't work. It was just miserable. Um, and whoever came up with the way to, you know, what you see now, it just right. it really works. Right. Yes. Aside from the fact that you have the Volkswagen, mm -hmm. where is the most uncomfortable place you've ever had sex? So the question was, besides the back, besides <laughs> the back of the Volkswagen, what's the most uncomfortable place you've had sex? <laughs> I don't know, but you can ask your husband later. I don't know. <laughs> What kind of question is that? Uh, I'm the place Now the funny answer is church, Father O'Malley. No. Uh, <laughs> very wide oh, down across Chris the line, line really. Uh, All right, so can I, can I still bash Ottawa then? Can we get back to, is that a good thing? You always bash Ottawa, is that right here? Since Clerks 2, do you ever throw it in Kevin Smith's face or engage his wife? Well, at that time, it was bad. You want to talk about an awkward day of shooting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, this is what I want you to do. I want you to sit on a swing. I want my wife to straddle you while you make, well, you make out with her and I film it. That is not on anybody's job fucking description anywhere. <laughs> Van Nuys, California, and you're born, and then that's <laughs> so the only thing worrying me that day was here she is, she's straddling me, and we had to do it a couple of days for some reason because of weather and bullshit. And I'm doing it, you know, we're kissing, we're making out, and all in my head is please don't let the launch code start. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good actor, I try to get into it, but at the same time, I'm like, it's the, the wheelie. It's the mic pack. It's the mic pack. I could, because I'm sitting and I put it in the back pocket, I put it in the front pocket, it's the mic pack. And she's like, really? Then what is that, a fucking nine volt? What is that volt? <laughs> I'm like, I'm all TV, baby. Uh, so that's all. But he made up for me because then I got to have Rosario Dawson straddle me in a car. And you know that. I may have taken some liberties in fucking up the shot four or five times. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Right, can I look at the camera again? How could you not? <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Mr. Preserve, I'm sorry. We'd all do it. Ryan, quit winking at the camera. 
That's it, I paid Kevin for building. <laughs> That and the day we were on the roof and she's dancing in front of me. I'm like, oh yeah. Milk, milk, lemonade, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there's a question back there. Yeah. Hi, my name is Jason. Ooh, that's a big question for you because you're a humble fucking thing. All about the titties, aren't you, sir? Well, not just that, but we actually got to get out of the mall and like shoot during daylight hours. Everything else that we shot, we shot from 8 o'clock at night to 8 in the morning. So everything you see in the mall is shot like 3, 4, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. We were, we were way too tired to be funny, so it's probably what worked, actually. We were trying to work, but the day we actually got to like work, see the sky at the outside was probably my favorite. It was cold as balls, but it was, we got to be outside of it. Yeah, so uh, that, that was going to be the last question, but here's the thing, the one thing I like to do at all my Q&As, I like to do a selfie with I'm facing this way and face back, and anybody want to get in the shot? You just stay where you're at, I'm going to take this big wide stuff.